Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Technical Test Analyst. We are in chapter 6 and this tutorial is about the sample questions on chapter 6 as we have covered the necessary topics of the chapter 6 in previous tutorials. Let's look at first the exam pattern of this particular chapter where we have two topics 6.1 and 6.2 but uh, both of them include a lot of sub segments talking about different tools and different approaches like data driven and uh, keyword driven approaches. Putting it all together you will be having 10 questions coming from this chapter where uh, 9 of them are K2 and 1 that is 6.1.4 is K3. So K3 means apply, so you need to be uh, very much understandable with how exactly the scenarios could be and you need to respond that back according to the scenario provided to you. But K2 is understand, so a lot of straightforward thing from the syllabus will be asked to you. So not much of the effort would be required uh, from this chapter, but yes, 10 questions plays a vital role. So you have uh, 9 at K2 and 1 at K3. So let's get started with the very first question here and uh, we're just looking at some simple questions so uh, where uh, just there's, as there is only one k3 which you can look forward to um, number one which of the following describes a common technical issue that causes automation projects to fail to achieve the planned return on investment now this question is very straightforward in order to ask you that which one of this is an issue related to a test automation tool? So you need to just filter out the benefits which can be achieved by the automation tool and the odd remaining one will be the right answer. So let's look at the answers here. <clears throat> we have got A, elimination of duplication of information across the tool. I think this is one of the really good benefits of automation tools that allows you to uh, remove the duplicate information if you are using as a part of it. So if you have uh, one of these features in your tool. This is actually going to add more value to return on investments rather than being an issue. B. Removal of manual checking of data exchange between tools. So if you are having an automation tool and still you have to do manually uh, removal of the data exchange or any kind of issues or manual checking, uh, that's actually a loss. But removal of manual checking is actually a benefit with the automation tool. C, uh, with use of an integrated development environment to simplify integration between tools. I think this is also as a part of one uh, first tutorial, we understood that the tools uh, which has uh, supported IDE uh, information as well as the tool, then it basically helps you to simplify your work with integrated uh, integration between the tools. Generally, we make use of certain uh, add-ins and add-ons in order to integrate and make um, enable two different tools to exchange data between them. So that's also a benefit. So I think we are actually left out with the right answer here. But yes, let's look at D. Lack of the separation between the code and changeable data in the test where. So assume that you have got a tool uh, which is to check that uh, whether the code uh, which you have written and the changeable data in the test where so when you manage the test where you see that whenever some modification happens the code gets impact and there are some areas which do not get impacted of the same thing and the different artifacts which are written for that like test cases and test labs executions and all so if you find about those kind of things it's really important to uh, consider that if the tool is capable enough to make the differences between the code and the changeable data in a test where also I think this is one thing if your tool is not capable of doing as per the syllabus uh, will result into some kind of losses or risk involved in using an automation testing tool so the right answer here is D that is lack of separation between the code and changeable data in the test where so that's something how you need to understand and analyze a question in order to pick the right answer Question number two, which of the following statements about false seeding tool is correct? So I think uh, again from the tutorials we have understood that when you talk about false seeding it is to insert the fault and check the uh, effectiveness of the test cases which you have prepared. So it's, it's just to make sure that how helpful and how efficient your test cases are and in return it makes you to improvise your test cases or further optimize by writing additional test cases and many such things. And this is also very straightforward definition is what they are asking for the false seeding tools. But 
for us it is important to understand how to eliminate the wrong answers as well. So A, these tools insert defects into the source code to test the input checking capabilities of the software. I think uh, when you talk about such options, uh, input checking can be done by mutating the test inputs, but uh, to test the input checking, the input should would need to be mutated. And we are not talking about any of such parameters here. And a uh, fault seeding tool is completely different than that. Option B, these tools insert defects into the source code to check the level of fault tolerance of the software. And if you talk about the fault tolerance, that how much limit is involved when you talk about the computational values, uh, mathematical inputs, operators and all, then fault injection tool will be helpful to do that because it's a quite straightforward definition of fault injection tool that it is to check the level of fault tolerance in the software, but not for the fault seeding. Option C, this tool uh, insert defects into the source code to the test uh, to test the effectiveness of the test suite. I think this is the more relevant option as of now. But still, let's look at D. These tools are generally used by developers. Uh, no, this is exclusively for technical test analysts who will be using uh, to do the same to check the effectiveness of the non-functional tests. So right answer here is C. Uh, these tools insert defects into the source code to test the effectiveness of the test suite. Question number three here, which of the following statements best captures the differences between emulators and simulators when used in a mobile application testing context? Again, uh, they're very, very straightforward uh, from the mobile tools, mobile application testing tools, and uh, we need to be familiar with the definitions and understanding of uh, the simulators and emulators, which will help us to determine the right answer here. Well, uh, the very first thing which comes here is a, a mobile emulator models the mobile platform's runtime environment, and a simulator utilizes the same runtime environment as the physical hardware. I think uh, we just last tutorial we have understood about simulator and emulator, where a when you talk about the simulator, a mobile simulator models the mobile platform's runtime environment, whereas the first part is uh, absolutely wrong. It's just like other way around it has done. So when you say simulator, it simulates a real-time environment without having a cell phone. Probably you don't have a mobile device and you want to do some of the basic testing earlier, but whereas emulator is the one which uh, replicates or mirrors your phone or the physical hardware. So it's just other way around which is given to you and that's the wrong option. When you look at B, applications compiled to be deployed and tested on a simulator could be also used by the real device. This is not the case of emulator. I think this is also contradicting just with the keywords of simulator and emulator because application compiled to be deployed and tested on an emulator are compiled into the actual byte code that could be used by the real devices. So emulator is the one which actually mirrors your real devices and helps you to understand everything from the real time environment, not the simulator. So if we understand the option one, we understand the option two as well, and we can very well eliminate uh, option B as well. C, simulators are useful in early stages and development, and emulators are used in the later uh, stages. I think, uh, there is no such statement made when we were working on these things and uh, we can use, you know, some of the organization can uh, start directly mirroring the real phones and start testing on the real environment because it's a mobile application, uh, more of kind like we would like to have the different uh, emulators and simulators at any point of time in order to start testing. So it's just that uh, some organization starts with uh, simulators first and then go to emulator, but there are no such statement that uh, it has to go in that way. So emulators and simulators both are helpful at any point of time and probably even at the early stages where you can simultaneously do all the activities. So I think we're just left with one option, but yes, <laughs> yet to confirm that, D, emulator and simulators allow the setting of various usage parameters. Now team, this is how the tricky options will be, where you think that we are going wrong with other options. Then the fourth is talking about something different, not about straightforward the definition. It says uh, emulator and simulators allow the setting of various usage parameters. So now this is one of the property of a 
uh, simulator and emulator which we need to understand so some concepts are also being discussed as a part of the uh, syllabus and we have covered that in previous tutorial so it's it's absolutely correct when you talk about applications uh, tested on a simulator are basically compiled into a dedicated version uh, which works on the similar uh, simulator but not on a real device so yes so simulator will uh, allow you to do that and uh, that's where the right option is D where emulator and simulator allow the setting of various usage parameter this is one of the properties or configuration options of simulators and emulators so the right answer here is D so uh, that's all and that's that there we complete even our syllabus uh, with the tutorial series of technical test analyst and uh, here is the last thing and final call by uh, revising and recapping everything what we have covered so we have uh, first of all worked on the technical test analyst preparation we had six chapters as a part of this this is 2019 and uh, chapter one had two questions chapter two will have eight questions chapter three will have seven questions chapter four will have 13 questions chapter five will have five questions and chapter six will have 10 questions Putting it all, summarizing together, the technical test analyst will consist of uh, 45 questions, all MCQ, but some of them will have uh, multiple option selection as well, so please be careful with that. Exam length will be 120 minutes uh, for English and uh, for the countries with non-English as primary language will be 150 minutes. So you altogether get 120 minutes to answer 45 questions but yes it requires a lot of your effort and attention so just make sure that you give your best there and read the questions and the options carefully before you can hit the right answer in the final options selection so yeah so that's where we complete our technical test analyst series i would like to wish all the best to all my viewers and uh, learners of this particular tutorial and uh, i wish you to get certified with technical test analyst soon and at the same time i also welcome you to join us for any further tutorials on different certifications everyone is welcome if you're looking ahead to get certified on istqb with different certifications i'm here and this channel will help you to address the same so finally that's all from this particular tutorial and series of technical test analysts should you have anything else beyond these things please feel free to comment below i'll be there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context all the best and happy learning team see you in the next tutorial